Hey, this is Sean from Sports Talk Bears. I just want to thank each and every one of you. A thousand subscriptions. We made it. Thank you so much. Now I want to talk about this game against the Packers. It is important for reasons you aren't talking about. No one's talking about. It's easy to say the Bears lead the NFL, 22 picks. Uh, Green Bay has seven interceptions. Uh, they rank 31st. We rank first. We have a better defense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's fine. But what no one's talking about is the fact that we have a huge need beyond victory, beyond defeat. We need, we need to use this final game to evaluate left tackle Braxton Jones. <laughs> left tackle is absolutely essential. It's absolutely essential we make a decision here as he is shown to be an ascending player on this offense. And the question is, is he the answer? I think he's showing that, yes, he is. But let's chop this up. The earlier game, uh, the earlier game against Green Bay, we are shuffling our offensive line everywhere. This time, that's not going to happen. We have a healthy Tevin Jenkins now. It looks like we're finally finding our identity. Sportsmockery.com, they pointed out that no Bears quarterback has played behind the same offensive line yet on the year. That's a great stat from them. This week, it's going to change that. The main player, <laughs> to me, the main evaluation is Braxton Jones and the necessity that he's the answer at left tackle. If he is the truth, we can use our draft capital elsewhere in the offseason, right? We have some holes to fill in this crucial position. If it can be covered for peanuts with a fifth-round draft pick, that is fantastic how sweet that would be. I think we might be there. Let's look at Braxton Jones as a player this year. He played a, he played in 10 straight games after mixing, missing six games in the early portion of the season. He struggled a bit in his return in week nine, right? Um, but some of the issues, they may be, may be because the Bears, we started out rotating him back in. Uh, still, his last three games coming into December, those were excellent. One of the keys, one of the keys is seeing Jones commit zero penalties for three straight weeks, and that has continued in the positive direction. We can look at his total total penalties and judge him by that, but he had six of his penalties in weeks one, two, and nine. So the improvement moving forward after the injury, that is obvious. <laughs> He's also been an immediate upgrade in the run game. He's much better than Borum at getting to the second level. But beyond that, he's been better in pass protection as well. He is ascending. He has an 82.7 pass blocking grade, that second highest in the team, and the highest among all of our offensive linemen per PFF. That same pass blocking grade, that ranks sixth in the entire league among all offensive tackles. We don't realize that. Jones has only allowed one sack and 17 pressures in 2023. That's compared to seven sacks and 40 pressures during his rookie season. Huge improvement. And he also had um, rookie of the year honors um, due to P PFF's uh, all-rookie team last year. So to ascend from that, that is fantastic. He's shown incredible improvement this year compared to his rookie year. Um, also in regards to his fundamentals, his overall technique, if his improvement keeps going, wouldn't it be a bad move for us to replace him just for the sake of drafting a top name offensive lineman, right? And you know the guys I'm talking about. But arguably, the best two draft choices GM Ryan Poles has made during his whole tenure in Chicago, it may have been Jones in the fifth round and, of course, right tackle Darnell Wright. It might be a mistake for us to allocate more resources to yet another offensive tackle. Let's spend our capital somewhere else. <laughs> somewhere else. That's what I'm trying to say. Pulse, however, he's been doing his due diligence, right? Despite the improvements Jones has shown in his second season, the Bears GM, he's attended multiple P he's attended multiple Penn State games this season. Most likely he went to get a first hand look at their highly sought after offensive tackle prospect. It never hurts to do your due diligence, though, especially, especially on the top prospect when we have multiple top picks. But it could be more beneficial to us. It could be better for our team's future if the front office 
we watch how some of our current players have been playing like Braxton Jones and not make a rash decision and not spend that top draft capital out of fear that he's not going to continue to develop. I think actually uh, the front office drafting a top offensive tackle prospect in this upcoming draft, it's a massive mistake. Uh, Clockersports.com, they shared some interesting stuff here, um, and they share this. There's a saying, right, about offensive linemen, and if you're hearing about them during the game, if their name's being called out, it's a bad thing. I will be honest, Braxton Jones, he's shown it to be the case early in the season. He rightfully catches a lot of grief for his penalties. He has six or seven, but that's second on the team. And that's behind rookie tackle Darnell Wright. He leads on 10, 10 penalty calls. Speaking what's more about the penalties, Wright, he's suited up in 12 games. Beyond the penalties, most of which have been false starts. He's been super solid. The false starts can, can be cleaned up. These are not holds. That changes that changes what we're saying about him. That changes using the penalties argument against him as something that he cannot improve on and something that's detrimental to having him as our left tackle. Now we look at through, uh, let's look at through the Thursday night football game on week 13. He was ranking 10th among tackles. <laughs> Once again, per PFF, an 81.6 pass blocking grade. That's fantastic. It goes beyond that. His run blocking grade is 65.2. That ranks, I mean, like 47th, I think it was, is what it was. Uh, that drops his overall grade to 41st. Still, he entered the week leading the league in pass blocking win rate. That's per PSN. P, that's per ESPN. Man, I can't say that. Sorry about that. His value also showed during his absence with the Bears offensive line, averaging a 56.3 pass blocking grade without him and a 64.6 pass blocking grade with him. That shows him on the line we are starting to gel, and that's with Tevin Jenkins being healthy. There are other pieces in and out of the lineup, too, that impacted his grade, even the times that he was on the offensive line. We're rotating guys in and out. That is not just due to him. Our pass blocking rate, that also still grades out worse without him. Uh, but only slightly, 55.3% compared to 56. Backup Larry Borum, he ranks second in, ru in run block win rate. So I can see why they're kind of rotating him back and forth in. But Braxton Jones looks like the answer there. In discussing ways to improve the offensive line, we know the players that have been popular picks with the second of the Bears' two first rounders, right? We know that. We know who these players are. But we also know what we have in Braxton Jones. Our line needs work, but let's use our resources well. No position group. No position group showcases the conflict certain metrics can present than the interior of our offensive line. So let's look at Tevin Jenkins, Lucas Patrick, Cody Whitehair. They've appeared in the top 20 rankings for pass blocking win rate among interior offensive linemen. That is fantastic. Both Patrick and Whitehair, they rank higher than Jenkins, but Jenkins has far and away been the better player in uh, of any of the three players this season. He ranks 48th at his position, checking in at around the same area in both pass and run blocking. Whitehair grades at about 67th, 115th overall. That's not great. And 119th at run blocking. I think we need an upgrade over Whitehair. Let's use our allocations. Let's use our resources on that and not on left tackle. We can't cover everything in the draft. Jenkins grade, it checks out 12th among guards and 23rd among all interior linemen. So what am I saying? That's a lot of stats. That's a lot of rankings. What am I saying? I think if we're absolutely intent in adding to the offensive line, uh, we've already done that since Poles has been on the job. He's handpicked four of the five starters from week 12. <laughs> That's when we had uh, a lot of the band together. We might need to focus. We might need to focus in the middle of our offensive line. That's where errant snaps have been a bugaboo. That's where we've had issues. The issue is not coming from left tackle. It's from our guards. In that case, we can use one of our first round picks on a player at another premium position as opposed to left tackle. 
Maybe this final game will either show the need to replace or be the exclamation point on an ascending season for Braxton Jones. And I'm a bit at, big advocate for using our draft capital elsewhere. <laughs> you guys let me know. Let me know what you think. Uh, let's continue to correspond in the comments. Like and subscribe. You guys are fantastic. And thank you so much to... Um, Thank you so much for bringing this channel to a thousand views and running. I appreciate you guys more than you know. And hey, let's beat the Packers. Let's go. Bear down.